Hi and welcome to another Dex from the Graphic Design School. My name is Leanne and today we're going to do part one of a two-part video series. Part one will be working in Photoshop and replicating what you can see on screen here where we have a black and white image or you can have a color image and then lighting the model or object with two color lights. So as the, the photographer has used a blue light on the left and a pink light on the right or whatever color you would choose. Part two of the video series will be hopping into Adobe XD and creating a website. We'll be using the images that we've created here. So this is really useful if you have a number of images and you wanna create a uniform look across the images or you have got imagery and you wanna show your client what it looks like to use this photographic treatment um, and you might be lining up a shoot and you wanna explain what you want the photographer to do. So I've been inspired by uh, these amazing images that I've seen recently showing the trends for 2018 where photographers have used these color gels on their lenses to create this amazing effect. So photographers do this so that it is actually hard to replicate in Photoshop. They want to create something that you can only really photograph, but we can create something similar and get the, a similar look in Photoshop. So I've got a number of images from one photographer. So there's the original and then I've used the same color lighting on the right. And I've used these images across a website that I've created in Adobe XD for a photographer. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you quickly Adobe XD. We won't be doing the XD work today, but this is the website, so you can see the imagery there. And then we've also got all the other pages. So this is a very small website just to show you how it works and how the imagery works. Um, we'll be creating the prototype and there you go. So I'll show you how to link the pages, um, how to create a slider. So if you click on at the bottom, the image changes, um, the different pages, how to create the links, uh, perhaps a portfolio, and then uh, a rollover effect. So for example, I have all my images in black and white, but when I click on here, it turns into color. I click on that image, and then it takes me to that particular page of my portfolio and a contact page. So we'll be doing Adobe XD next week, but for now we're gonna hop into Photoshop and have a look at that image and create the lighting. So you can do this with a color image and then it just creates the lighting over that, the color image, or you can use it black and white, but just make sure before you start that you have got it in RGB so that when we apply the color lights to the, the model, um, they do actually appear in color and not in black and white. The first thing we're going to do is just mask this uh, model. So we're going to use our quick selection tool. Um, you can make it a little bit bigger if you like. And just start selecting your background. Hold down your shift to select uh, multiple areas. You'll notice that um, it will select some areas you don't want, but we can go into the select and mask and refine that later. So just select this little area here. You can see some of the neck has been selected there. So I can just um, hold down my option key just to add that to my selection. But as you might have guessed, we want to select the model. We don't want to select the background. So we're going to invert the selection in a moment. And then we can look at masking it. So hold down Command Shift I to invert your selection. You can see the running ants are running around my model now. We're going to refine the mask, so go to select and mask, and there we can see it. So you can have a look at your mask in various ways, the overlay in red. You can have a look at it in marching ants or onion skin, so you can see the transparency. I like to use the, the color overlay. You can change the color there, and you can also change the opacity, depending on how you like to work. Uh, just a quick tip, if you, your model has got hair, a good, good tool to use is to use the edge detection and then it will soften around the hair. Uh, for now I'm just going to be using these brushes to add and subtract to my mask. So just zoom on in and I'm just having a look over here and so we can just zoom in a little bit. And using a paintbrush I'm just going to add to that mask. So I'm just going to paint in the skin areas that have been covered. So this is quite an unusual image. Just going to make sure 
Um, just gonna add these little white bits. Have a look and check out your skin tones here. So I'll just continue cleaning up this mask until I'm 100% happy with it. And I'll just speed up the video for now as I refine my mask. Once you're happy with your mask, you can just press OK. And then you'll see our running ants are still running around our model. We're going to create a new layer now by just creating the cutout of the model without the background. So with the running ants still selected, go Command J and you can see it creates a new layer over here. So we're going to just call that cutout and it has the transparent background. So if I click off my background, you can see I just have my model selected. So that's going to be the foundation of creating our lighting and our lighting effect. So the good thing to do now is just make sure that that is a smart object. So anything we do to this layer, the original stays intact. Go to filter, uh, blur, Gaussian blur, and 3.7 is good. Just a little bit of a blur. So um, it fudges the edges a little bit for us so that our um, lighting is soft on the edges and go okay. Uh, next thing we're going to do is create another filter. Now this might look strange um, to begin with but it just gives us some some light edges. So go to under filter, filter gallery and you'll find stylized glowing edges. Um, you can play with the edge width um, and it might look odd right now uh, but you'll see how it works um, to create a little bit of a highlight. I've got edge width at 2, edge brightness 7 and smoothness 11 and go OK. Now we're going to be working on the light direction. So we're going to select the cutout uh, mask. So hold down command and just click on cutout and you can see you can select the mask. Uh, we're going to do a gradient fill. So go to your adjustment layers and go gradient and select uh, foreground to transparent. So it goes from black to transparent. We're going to keep it at linear, um, change the angle to zero. And I want the, we're going to do the right hand side first. So I'm just going to reverse it so that the, the black falls onto the left and just change the scale down to about 30 and go OK. We're going to call this our light direction. So we're going to do the right hand side first and then um, we'll do the left hand side. So our lighting direction and we're going to create a clipping mask with the cutout below. So go create clipping mask and we're just going to chop it behind there and then our cutout which is now on the top just create a clipping mask with that light direction below so there you can see how it applies um, the light direction just to the right hand side and then we'll be overlaying layers in a moment to show the colors. Uh, above your cutout layer we're going to add some level adjustment. So go to levels. This might not always be necessary uh, depending on what you want to uh, affect you want to achieve but we're going to do it here. We're going to apply a clipping mask in the property windows of that um, of that layer and then we're just going to drag the white across. You can affect how sharp that um, glowing edge is so you can just play with that if you want it a little bit brighter and you can always come back to that and manipulate it at a later date. We're now going to create the inside glow on the right hand side. So again we're going to load the cutout so hover over cutout, hold down command and you will select it so you get the little running ants. Um, with your cutout loaded we're going to add a layer, solid color. Uh, we can just go for pink. I'm just going to copy that and go OK. Now go to your properties of your mask. So click on your mask, go to your properties and we're going to invert that so it selects the background and then we're just going to feather it quite a bit, close to 200 so that it comes 
into the edges of my model. And then we're going to apply it just to the right hand side. So we're going to apply that clipping mask that we've been using. And it should apply it to the right hand side. So we're going to call this our inside glow. And then we have the beginnings of the lighting on the right hand side. So we now have uh, four different layers. We're just going to click on the top one, hold down shift, click on right down to lighting direction and then let's create a new folder and we're going to call this folder right hand side lighting and this just all helps when we duplicate for the left hand side now we're going to add the light color to that so the, we have the beginnings of it here with the pink um, but now we're going to add the actual color over that so on top of the your folder that you've just created create another solid color um, above the cutout and we can use the same color and go OK. We're going to change that to the blending mode to multiply. So change from normal to multiply. And then you will start to see your image there. Where you have your right hand side lighting folder, we're going to change that blending mode to screen. And then go back to your color fill. And this will be our light color. We're going to apply the clipping mask and this will apply the light color just to the right hand side. There we go. So you can always double click on here and change the color. Um, I'm just going to keep it as we had it before and go OK. So we can call this um, light color. And this will all help again when we do the left hand side. Um, and now we're going to add some color to the right hand side as though the color is hitting the background behind him too. So for the background color, this soft, soft light, on top of our light color, we're gonna create a gradient fill. And we're gonna set that to linear, also change it to 30, scale it down, um, oh, not our angle, uh, we'll keep it at zero. Uh, scale it down to 30 and just reverse it so it's coming on the same side as our um, as our lighting on the right hand side and then uh, click on the color and we'll make it the same color as our pink and go okay go okay okay and then our blending mode we're just going to change that to soft light and there we have it uh, I like to drag down the opacity just a little bit so it's a little bit more subtle uh, but you can play with that too so of course you can always change your light color um, this lighting in the background I'm just going to call it soft light um, to a different color so that it has a slightly different color to uh, what is happening on the arm so now I have three layers there making up the right hand side I'm just going to select the top one select the bottom one hold down shift create a folder and I'm going to call that right hand side and now to create the left hand side lighting take your right hand side folder just drag it down to copy that folder so it gives me a right hand side copy you might actually like the effect it creates there with the vibrant colors uh, but I'm going to change it to a left hand side so we have two folders there I'm just going to open that one up open up your what's this right hand side lighting I'm just going to change that uh, to left hand side lighting so that we know what we're working with and then go all the way down to your light direction so that's the first thing you'll change double click on your light direction and just reverse it and you'll see that the pink highlight immediately falls on the left you might want to keep uh, the same color there um, or you might want to change it like we're going to do so we're just going to change the inside glow and just go a bright blue I'm just going to copy that blue so I can use it again go OK and we can close that up and then go to your light color double click on there uh, copy that paste the blue in there and then a soft light over the top change the color there OK OK and then we want to 
you can see it's falling on the right so we just want to flip where the gradient starts and there we have the blue on the left so you can go okay and there we have our left hand side right lighting and our right hand side lighting so we can always go in and change it if you want to have a slightly maybe you want to bring in a bit of a green on the left with a soft light you can double click on that and double click double click click and then perhaps you want to bring you can see what happens there is that your background goes a little bit green you still have a touch of blue there and the green is hitting the chest so you can get some interesting effects um, or you might want to uh, make it look like the background is more uniform pink uh, for now I'm going to keep it at a blue go okay okay and there we have it so you can save as and I'm going to call this um, color. So I have my original. And I also need to mention that the images that I've used are from Unsplash. And all the images I've used are from a photographer called Jake Davies. So as we get into the XD, you'll see all those images are quite similar. And he's provided some beautiful black and whites. It's given me a great opportunity to create this color filter. So it's up to you now. I hope you find some great images to use or use the images that I've used. Go to Unsplash and, and search for Jack Davies and just accredit him. And uh, play with creating different light filters on your model uh, using different colors, right and left. And you can also play with um, intensifying the colors. You can duplicate the layers and get really some strong colors happening, but create maybe three or four images in the style with the same color and then next week we'll be using those same images to create a website in Adobe XD and then creating a working prototype. So look forward to seeing what you come up with and look forward to working with you in Adobe XD next week. That's all from Dex for now. Goodbye.